Hi there. Welcome to part two of my video series on the linked list data structure. In this video, we will discuss the append algorithm for linked lists. The append algorithm is responsible for adding a new node to the end of the linked list. Since the node is always added to the end of the list, this means that the append method will make the list an unordered list. In order to accomplish this, we're going to need to do a few things. We will need to create a node. We will need to store data in the node. And we will need to append the node to the end of the list. Let's examine the algorithm using pseudocode. First thing we'll need to do is to create a new node. Then we'll need to store data within the new node. And then we'll have to determine if the list is empty or not. If the list is empty, then we'll need to make the new node the first node in the list. Otherwise, we'll need to traverse the list to find the last node. Once we've identified the last node, then we can add our new node to the end of the list. So how do we create a new node? In C++, we could write code that looks like this. Here we're using dynamic memory allocation to create our new node. Node star n equals new node. New is going to return the memory address of our brand new node and we'll store that memory address in the node pointer named n. Now we're going to need to store data within the new node. How do we do that? Here's a statement that dereferences pointer n to access the value member of the node structure. We've assigned it some value x. The other member of this data structure is a next pointer which contains the memory address of the following node. Since this is an append algorithm, we'll, we will always be adding the new node to the end of the list. Nodes at the end of a linked list always point to null. Therefore, this new node's next pointer will be set to null. If the list is empty, we need to make the new node the first node in the list. How can we test if the list is empty? Answer, check if the head pointer is null. How do we make the new node the first node in the list? Answer, assign it to the head pointer. Here is a statement in C++ that does that. Otherwise, if the list is not empty, then we need to traverse to the end of the list. How do we traverse a linked list? Answer, we will combine a temporary pointer, and here's an example in C of us doing that, where we create a new pointer, in this case we'll call it P, and we initialize it with the contents of the head pointer. Recall that the head pointer contains the memory address of the first node in the list. If it's not an empty list, null otherwise. Once we have our temporary pointer, we can then use it to perform the traversal. Here's an example in C. While P is not equal to null, set P to P next. In other words, overwrite the memory address in P with the memory address inside of the next pointer that's stored inside of the node whose address is currently in P. Here's an example in the abstract. Here we have a representation of a linked list. The box at the very beginning of the list is the head pointer. It is not a node in of itself, it is just a node pointer that contains the memory address of the first node in the list. Each one of the boxes has an arrow pointing to the next node in the list. So in this example, we have a linked list containing three nodes. The head pointer is pointing to the first node, and the last node is pointing to node. We'll need a temporary pointer, which we'll call P, initialized with the memory address inside of head. So our picture looks like this. Both head and P now have the same contents. They both point to the first node. The P pointer will be used to traverse the list. 
The head pointer is not used because we want it to remain unchanged. It needs to always contain the memory address of the first node on the list. So the loop works something like this. While P is not null, set P to P next. Initially, P is not null. Therefore, we'll set P to P next. Since P is still not null, we'll set P to P next. Since P is still not null, we'll set P to P next. Since P is null, P stops being updated, the loop ends its iteration, and we are left with P containing null. Now, in this situation, we do not have the memory address of the last node in the list. This is what we need in order to add our new node to the end of the list. To add our new node to the end of the list, we have to overwrite the next pointer in the last node of the list to the memory address of our new, or with the memory address of our new node. Currently, P has null. If we try to dereference P at this point, our program will crash. Therefore, we want to stop the iteration of the loop that's performing the traversal one iteration sooner. And the way we can do that is instead of testing if P is null, we can test if P next is null. Okay. So here, in our original example, we saw something look like this, while well, P is not equal to null pointer. If this is the case, if this is the code we use, traversal ends with p equaling null. This is what we want to avoid in this case. Instead, what we want is while p next is not equal to null, the traversal will stop one iteration sooner, and leave p containing the memory address of the last node in the list. Finally, once the traversal has ended, p will contain the memory address of the last node in the list, and now it's a simple matter of adding our new node to the end of the list. How do we do this? Dereference P to access the node's next pointer. Then assign the new node's memory address to the last node's next pointer. Let's tie this all together with an abstract example. We're going to need to start off by creating a new node. In order to do that, we're going to need to have a node pointer which we'll call n to store the memory address of our new node. Once we have that, we can create our new node and assign its memory address to n. Once we have that, we then can assign the data to our new node. Now we're ready to identify the last node of the list and assign our new node to the end of the list. In order to do that, we'll have to traverse to the end of the list, and so we'll need a temporary pointer P. Temporary pointer P will need to be initialized with the memory address of the head node, whose address is stored in the head pointer. So long as P next is not equal to null, we will advance P. And since P next is not equal to null, we will advance P again. Now, P next is set to null, so the traversal stops. At this point, P contains the memory address of the last node of the list. So now we will set P next to N. So our picture looks like this. Okay. So this concludes the append algorithm. Our new node has been created. The data has been stored in the new node and the pointers have all been updated so that our new node is now at the end of the list. So let's summarize. In this video, we introduced the linked list append algorithm. We briefly discussed traversal and how it's used to identify the last node of the linked list. To support these explanations, we provided abstract examples. This brings this video to a close. If you found it useful or helpful, please consider hitting the subscribe button and giving it a thumbs up. As usual, if you're a student of mine, feel free to stop by my office hours or email me any questions you might have. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.